I've really worked hard at no, never being number one. I have no interest in being number one because there's only one place you can go if you're number one, <laughs> and that's down. If I'm bored, I get on my train set. I'm not confrontational. I enjoy uh, to make people feel relaxed, uh, but I also like them to feel special. So I, right from the beginning, I designed clothes that were very wearable because I, I just like human beings. In fact, in many countries, my shop is next door to a, one of the big famous uh, designer brands. Uh, and in, in quite a lot of department stores around the world, it's the same. But in some areas and some magazines, they don't really think of me in the same way, probably because I don't go to all the parties and I'm not elitist and I'm not a difficult man and I'm very easy to talk to and uh, I'm too normal, maybe. <laughs> Her, quite a good thing, I think. This is a nice story, really, because a lady on my birthday arrived downstairs and called up, they called up and said there's a lady here with a birthday present for you. So I went downstairs and a very nice looking 30 something year old and this was all wrapped up. She said oh I'm going to meet you, that's very nice, this is a birthday present for you. And I said oh thank you very much. She said it's a bicycle from the year you were born. I found it in Moscow. And I said wow you got it shipped from Moscow. She said no I just came with it now. I'm going back this afternoon. So she just came in the morning <laughs> and then went back and then in the afternoon and didn't even expect to, yeah. to see me. It's just extraordinary, the stories. I really like my cycling. I had no interest in fashion. Um, I didn't really know much about fashion. I mean, actually, I was quite smart, but not really fashionable. And then I had a bad crash one day. I was in hospital for three months. I came out of the hospital. I arranged to meet a few people that I'd met in hospital, other patients, and by chance it was the pub where all the art students went from the uh, local art school. And uh, suddenly this world opened up to me that I was absolutely fascinated by. And then um, I started, I met Pauline, and then we started our own little shop, and then we started our own little collection, so it was like... These drawings were done by his girlfriend at the time, somebody called Pauline Denyer, who studied fashion at the Royal College of Art in London. And she was really, she became, later became Paul's wife, but they were business partners in the very beginning. Pauline would do a lot of the early sketches and Paul would look after the business side. So here we've got a notebook with some of Pauline's sketches and Paul's handwriting and notes. I'd become friends with the local tailor. I used to go there every lunchtime and watch him cut and sew. And uh, I was pleading with him, oh, I need a shop, I need a shop. And one day he just said, take this room at the back here, take the room. You can get an entrance from the other street, take the room, call it a shop. So this space was so tiny, it was just three by three metres square. And we've worked from original photographs to try and create a sort of feeling of what it might have been like to work in that shop. There's a great um, image of Paul here inside the first shop in 1970. Actually, it was, so, it was so small, so when you when you're the customer, when you were with the customer, you were really close to the customer. Of course, I never dreamt ever that I would have such a beautiful large shop in the middle of Mayfair, London. When I see young students, I always talk about this balance between your love, your image, your desire and your I'm paying the rent. And if you only do that it's, it won't work because it's too boring and too obvious and if you only do that at the beginning of your career you might suffer. So I try to get the balance right between the two and luckily it worked and um, that's why I'm here with you now. This is Paul's personal selection of clothes from the Paul Smith archive. We've arranged them um, according to four key themes that have inspired Paul's work over the years and for which he's become very well known. 
um, and those are travel, um, colour, print and British tradition. I came up with the expression classic with a twist because when I started for Clothes for Men in the late 1970s uh, it was very conservative. For men's fashion he changed everything. Paul Smith added um, kind of a quirkiness to suits. So he made kind of suits kind of fun and individual. And so he, he knows how to make you look casual but smart. And then that love of British tradition, we look at um, you know, many sort of very sort of British motifs that Paul has used throughout his careers, like the traditional British fabrics of very high quality, um, like Harris Tweed that he uses a lot and, and, and goes back to. So the quality of fabric is something that's very, very important to him. So this is a, these are the suits here. So the first thing about the suits is there's always, there's always the lovely surprise. And, um, Inside is one of the key points because um, it has a, a, what is called a loose canvas. So when you move in one of our suits, it moves with you. A lot of suits inside are glued. So when you move, the whole suit goes up. But with this, it, it moves with your body. He's quirky with his tailoring. He used unusual colours, unusual fabrics. For example, this is a men's um, jacket that's been inspired by um, Afghan blankets. One of the most common things when I travel around the world is um, people at airports say to me, are you Paul Smith? I got married in one of your suits. Or my first suit was a Paul Smith suit and it's really lovely. A lot of designers, the fashion show twice a year is the most important thing for them. But with me, it's uh, just part of the process. My company motto is never assume, so that means just check, 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 check everything, and that really works well. I have every look uh, and I have every comment about hands in the pockets or hands out of the pockets or bag under the arm. So I'm very organised. Yeah. Walk down the street. Yeah, she's nervous. I'll do it. Yeah, I can do it. I'm the boss of many thousand. Obviously, you have to have certain rules, but um, I would say that I'm quite relaxed. Am I a controller? <laughs> you see? It's been really, really great to be our own company, not on the stock market, not being pushed by shareholders. So yeah, of course I'm proud, it's great. <laughs>